Bruce Lowry Chevrolet is celebrating 100 years of family ownership and giving you the best deal on your next vehicle. From the 2022 Chevy Silverado Crew Cab with 1.9% APR for well-qualified buyers to the 2022 Chevy Equinox with 0% APR or $1,000 cash allowance. Come see us at 711 Southwest Lube 820 in Fort Worth or visit BruceLowryChevrolet.com. Bruce Lowry Chevrolet. Find new roads. If you've been here in the summer in Texas, you've probably heard someone say it's, for example, it's 95 degrees, but it feels like 102. A lot of people say, well, just say it's 90, or just say it's 102 degrees. Why are you saying it's 95 if it feels like a different temperature? Well, here's the thing. There is a difference. The feels like temperature is called the heat index, and it's calculated considering the air temperature and relative humidity. So, it's how hot the air is plus how much humidity is in the air. That relative humidity is how much moisture is in the air at any one time. If you have 100% relative humidity, that means that the air is holding as much humidity as it possibly can at any one time. And warm air holds more moisture than cold air. That's why you have more humidity in the summer than in the winter. In the winter, you start to get cracks in your hands and your lips are chapped and uh, some people even get nosebleeds because it's so dry. But that's the thing. In the summer, it's really, really humid. And that's why we have severe weather a lot of the time in the spring because we get a more even battle between those cold, dry air masses interacting with warm, moist air here in North Texas. And I know people don't like the word moist, but you may just have to hang with me on this one. Higher humidity means less evaporation of moisture in the air and can be dangerous to humans. Evaporation of moisture is how we cool down, right? It's the same thing as if you uh, are in the pool and you're nice and warm and then you get up, especially on a windy day, you feel very cold in the air because it's evaporating off of you and it's releasing that heat and you're cooling down. So when we sweat, we're trying to cool down, but if there's more and more humidity, it makes it harder and harder for us to uh, regulate all of that. So let's talk about why we're so humid in Texas. This is an example of just today. Uh, actually, I think this was looking at Friday about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You notice all this purple. This is all the Gulf moisture. You look, the Gulf of Mexico is just pink, right? And you see that that has surged northward into our area. You see the, the Gulf Coast is very, very pink. And that, that kind of pink and, and dark violet color is moving into North Texas. So we get that Gulf moisture in the air, and obviously off to the west around San Angelo, it's much more dry because there's a much more dry air mass in that area. But here, basically you have a dry line, the line between the dry air and the moist air. And a lot of the time, especially when you have a cold front come in, this is where you have that interaction and storms develop. Not in that case, but this is your delineation. And this is why in North Texas we are so humid, because we have all of this Gulf moisture that comes right out of the Gulf, right into North Texas, and uh, just makes it soggy and sticky and miserable. Calculating the heat index looks like this, okay? <laughs> this is, this is the, the formula you have to use and the process you go through to calculate the heat index. The nice thing is, the National Weather Service has given us this uh, table, makes it a little easier. So you can find your temperature here and your relative humidity here and find your, uh, your feels like temperature, your heat index here. And you can see here on the bottom, you know, likelihood of heat disorders, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, those kinds of things. Uh, so when you start getting into these reds, basically when you get from about uh, 120 degrees higher, that's extreme danger. Extre uh, danger is in the orange. Extreme caution is in the uh, kind of the gold color, and that yellow is caution. I'm going to tell you, even the 80 degrees up here is probably miserable. So, so there, I don't think there's a reading here that is in any way comfortable. So, how do we deal with that? Well, the the, the you saw me talk yesterday on Tuesday tips about how to stay safe in the heat. Some of those apply here, not all of them. One of them being, obviously, stay inside when you can. Inside, if you, especially if you have circulating air, it's going to be less humid. Air movement helps with humidity. That's why when we have these windy days, 
sometimes that helps a little bit with the overall uh, feels like temperature and the humidity uh, because the air is moving around. So you're not just, it's not just sitting there, right? You're not just sitting there boiling and cooking in that, that heat index. Use a dehumidifier. If you have trouble in your home of it feels humid inside when it's humid outside, get a dehumidifier. Use one of those to kind of help dry out your home and make it more comfortable. That may also help you lower your overall AC use because you're not trying to compensate for the uh, relative humidity in your home and that heat index inside. So sometimes that can be a lifesaver for your AC not having to quite work as hard. Stay hydrated. Like we talked about, it's harder for the uh, moisture to evaporate from the air, makes it harder for you to regulate your temperature. If you stay hydrated, it's going to help your body be able to maintain and deal with those conditions. Listen to your body and don't push yourself. That's probably one of the, one of the, if I had to rank these, these are probably higher and higher in ranking, but listen to your body and don't push yourself. If you're not feeling well when you're outside or you're uh, taking care of a, of a, of a a task or something, don't push yourself too much because you don't want to make yourself sick and get heat stroke or heat exhaustion or one of these conditions. Your body will tell you when things are starting to go wrong. You'll feel, uh, you know, exhausted, obviously, lethargic. Uh, you'll start to feel cramping sometimes. You'll um, you'll just start to feel uh, off and, and uh, maybe your head will get kind of lightheaded and uh, you feel nauseous. Any of those signs, stop immediately go inside, see what getting hydrated and calming down and, and cooling down feels like. If you don't get any better, seek medical attention. Check on family, friends, neighbors, and pets. Pets and humans alike can't deal with really high humidity for too long. So you want to check on those folks that might be uh, more uh, vulnerable to those things. I hope that this was helpful to you. I, I know that there's a lot of people that uh, they think that uh, uh, – this, this feels like temperature is kind of a weird concept. Uh, they, they, they like to approach it with some sarcasm of, if it feels like 102, I'm just going to say it feels like 102. But this is why it's different, and this is why it's important to pay attention to that heat index uh, and pay attention to those feels like temperatures and pay attention to your dew points and your humidity. Because if you're going to be outside for a long time and you have high humidity and you have a, a large spread between your temperature, your air temperature, and it feels like temperature, uh, you're going to want to pay attention and make sure that you take these steps to keep yourself healthy and safe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.